All right. I think it's a good time to start. It's uh, 11.03, 11.04. My name is Sean Grant uh, with the Car Solutions. Thanks everyone for joining today's session. Uh, the focus is going to be on master data management for optimal use of data across the enterprise and, and specifically how it relates to CRM and Pivotal. Uh, today, uh, myself, uh, we have Mark Fillingham, who uh, will be handling all the Q&A. So any, any questions, anything uh, that you'd like to uh, really dive into a little bit more, please uh, ping Mark through either Q&A or chat. He'll be keeping an eye on both. Uh, and today we have a very special guest, uh, Tom Era from Prophecy Group. Uh, some of you uh, folks who've been longtime Pivotal customers may remember Tom. Uh, he worked for Pivotal CRM for a number of years, and, uh, and both Mark and I worked with him, as well as several other folks that really make up Prophecy, uh, whether in sales, management, or even the CEO. They're all former uh, Pivotal employees at one time. So it's uh, kind of a nice, nice fit uh, for Takara to partner with uh, prophecy and offer this to our Pivotal customers. And there'll be a lot more uh, information on that. Um, so this is the third part of our CRM uh, evolution series. Uh, we'll, we'll have some more coming uh, down the road. We, we're just working on the dates as well as the topics. And I'll use this opportunity if there are any topics that you'd like to hear about, uh, please don't be shy, let Mark, Mark or myself know and uh, we'll, we'll do our best to uh, try to come up with a presentation, some speakers around that. So very good. Um, let me get into the, there we go. First, uh, introducing Tom Era. Uh, Tom's been in technology, working in technology for nearly three decades, uh, helping clients maximize the value of their organizational data uh, knowing that creating a solid base of accurate, complete data is the foundation for any business effective utilization of CRM, uh, ERP, marketing automation, analytics. He specializes in integration of system data to create the best holistic view of enterprise data for strategic decision making and analysis. Uh, so a little more about Tom. So Tom, uh, as an account executive, as well as I believe he was strategic accounts as well for a while, I believe it was around seven or eight years that he worked for Pivotal. Um, so he knows Pivotal, the product, extremely well, its capabilities, and also um, some of the weaknesses. And I think Tom would agree with myself that one of the, one of the weaknesses uh, of really any CRM solution is having accurate data. It comes up in every single implementation that we're involved with, and, and, and that's hundreds of implementations, and data is always an issue, data quality. Um, and so one of the things that we wanted to do was partner uh, with a company and product that could fill a gap uh, for Pivotal CRM customers, and that is uh, how to have better data, accurate data, um, and more importantly, control the master data record um, and as it relates to Pivotal. And for us, it was really a no brainer to partner with Prophecy. Uh, we, we were able to build uh, integration very easily. Um, and uh, we uh, are here today to really promote this product, the connector and this partnership uh, with Prophecy. So the agenda today, um, I'm doing the intro right now. Uh, we'll talk about, Tom will talk about what, what does master data management do? Uh, we'll have some examples from our customers, I'll talk about why prophecy, and at the end, the prophecy difference. And this is all presented by Tom Era. Um, so with that being said, um, yeah, there was one more slide I wanted to show you. Um, this relates to Takara built connectors and you'll see that Prophecy is one that uh, we've really focused on this past year. In addition to Salesforce, Marketo, Sharp, Spring, Gmail, we're most uh, optimistic about Prophecy and what Prophecy can do for our customer base uh, and specifically their data. So uh, Tom, can you hear me okay? Are you there? I can, can you guys hear me? I can hear you just fine, perfect. All right. Yep. I'll turn it over to you. All right. Well, thank you very much, Sean. And I uh, am going to take over the screen right now. 
And beautiful. Okay, perfect. And um, I can see it just uh, fine. Perfect. Uh, up in full screen. Perfect. Yep. All right. Great. So uh, I'm going to uh, just jump right over to that slide. Um, a little bit of housekeeping and, and full disclosure. Um, in the new virtual office, my uh, my four kids uh, virtual school. So I apologize up front if there are any uh, SWAT entries into my office from my two year old, or uh, or any or the game warden, or as I call my wife these days. So I'll attempt to uh, to keep <laughs> professional. Very um, good. So uh, let me make sure you guys are seeing everything over here. Um, so what is MDM and what does it do? And, uh, and thank you, by the way, for that nice introduction, Sean. Um, and I, I am happy to make this interactive as well, by the way. Um, so if anybody has any questions, we'll try to answer them during the, the presentation. If not, we'll answer them at the end. But um, when I talk about master data management and what it does, um, it, it really, it, you have to start with the problem. And I think everybody understands that the enterprise data landscape is growing, that we're getting a lot more data and a lot more sources and, and much greater complexity. Um, there's been all kinds of analogies that people have drawn about um, the volume of data and what it looks like in terms of size and scope. Um, I've seen one where it compares it to, uh, you know, if you look at data as a landmass, it, you know, it used to be the size of Central Park, now it's the size of the state of New York. Um, over the, just the last, you know, five to 10 years, data is growing at this kind of uh, incredible rate. And it's growing in all the systems that you have. It's in, in multiple locations and you're getting new attributes about your customers all the time. And that's particularly relevant to your CRM customers who are focused on customer relationship management and understanding a full view of the customer. And with a, a solution like Pivotal, which is near and dear to my heart, as Sean mentioned, um, you have this great flexibility where you've added a lot of custom capabilities and a lot of custom fields around your customers. As you collect more and more data, um, Pivotal is a great place to put things that didn't otherwise fit elsewhere, but it's hard to keep track. And anybody that's had a CRM system, any CRM system for any length of time knows that you cannot keep it 100% clean. You cannot remove duplicates. And then if add that to all of the other systems that you have in all the other locations and potentially grew through acquisition or acquired new systems or changed over to new software technologies. Um, in many cases, you know that you have three, four, five, and we've seen as many as 45 different locations for the same records in some of our customers. And with that size and scale of complexity, you're always going to have issues. So, once you encounter these issues, you realize that the very basic business questions that you have to answer every day in order to service your customers, in order to operate as a business, become a lot more challenging to answer. Simple questions like, how many customers do we have? If you ask a large organization, how many customers that you have, do you have? You may get a room full of different answers depending on how many people you ask in what different departments. Are these two vendors the same? What if you're buying products or you're, you have multiple suppliers? In some cases, you may be buying different products from the same supplier or subsidiaries of suppliers. And then how much do we buy from any one supplier? The number of questions that, are, that you have to answer like this every day um, are, are probably unlimited. And as you know, it takes a lot more effort to get these answers than it used to just a few years ago. So that's what MDM does. Master data management is meant to kind of solve this riddle, put the puzzle together so that you can get to these questions without having to run a report or go through a month long consolidation at the end of every quarter. Helps you to get these answers and actually keep them in place real time so that it isn't that big of a struggle. And uh, if you've encountered these issues, this is gonna sound like maybe it's too good to be true or um, a much bigger effort, but that is what master data management is designed to do. So how do we do that? Well, again, you take a look at the problem. What do you have? You have data growing in volume, complexity, 
inconsistent, unreliable information. And on the other hand, or on the other side of this, you have all the different projects that you need to accomplish. You have to get at, and let me move my picture here real quickly. You have to get to enterprise insight, regulatory compliance. We wanna be able to compete. And then you have to undergo, in some cases, a digital transformation to really service your customers, to harness your data, to take full advantage of all that information you've collected, to service your customers and to compete in the new world of you know, digital intelligence. And master data management bridges that gap or bridges that chasm, if you will, by creating a truth across all of your enterprise data landscape. It does it through a few different features and we're gonna dive into those in a little bit. Um, data quality, data governance and data harmonization. So where else does MDM fit? And is it just around customer data? I know that a lot of you folks are, um, are focused on CRM. Some of you may have other jobs as well that you have to deal with other systems, but customer data is only one piece of the picture. It's a huge piece. In many cases, companies can't operate without customers. I've learned that early on. Um, but on top of having customer data, you're gonna look at other types of data. You've got product data, facility and location data, supplier data, item masters or part masters, um, and it goes on and on, including things like reference data or industry specific information. Um, if you were in a like financial services or healthcare or insurance, or you name the industry, you're gonna have specific data that you have to keep track of and it doesn't always fit neatly into your applications that you have in place. And then you get additional silos of data or those desktop databases that um, are stored in Excel. So how does master data management help? Well, master data management at its heart does four simple things. It first looks at all the data across your systems, the records. In this case, I'm looking at company data or customer data. It could also be your suppliers, it could be your parts, it could be your facilities, assets, et cetera. Um, in this case, we see that Deb Varchi, who I worked with 20 years ago at Standard Pacific Homes, was then um, merged with another company called Cal, or, and became a company called Cal Atlantic. Well, Deb Varchi didn't change, but somebody else interacted with her over those 20 years, and she doesn't go by Deborah anymore, she's now Deb. And when I put in her record at Cal Atlantic, I misspelled it. Well, it's the same person. And then Cal Atlantic got acquired by Lenar Homes. And now she's gone back to Deborah. And I've put her name in again under Lenar. And now I've got three records for Deb Barchi. Nobody made any mistakes with the exception maybe of the spelling, but it's the same person and the same company. And now I have three records that are all duplicates in one system that were put in properly, followed proper procedure, but are now causing me issues when I go through and try to do reporting. So how does MDM fix that? Well, this could be happening across your CRM system. It could also be happening across your ERP or other systems. First thing we do is we correct the data through a series of fuzzy logic or fuzzy matching. We group the records and then correct all of those incorrect duplicate information or items. And we create one Deb Varchi record. The next thing we're gonna look at is Deb is in multiple systems. And in some of these systems, I have incomplete information. I may be missing email, I may be missing Dunn's records. So the next step is to enhance that record by going either out to other sources within your organization or to third parties to enhance and enrich that data. In this case, I can go to um, Melissa data for address verification and DNB to get the corrected DUNS number. Next step is then looking where else is that record stored in my organization? It's not only in the ERP and the CRM, but also in the supply chain management system. And I see that I have the old address for the Standard Pacific, but it's associated with Deb Varchi's Lenar record. So now I have to go and connect all of that data 
looking downstream and connecting it with my other systems. And then finally, I'm going to look at all these various sources of data throughout my organization. I've got the different company names, Stanpak, Standard Pacific, Lennar Corp, Cal Atlantic, Lennar Homes. And I have to create now a unified version or the best aggregate view of that record by creating what we call a golden record. It's the best representation of all the data that you have in all of your systems for this one record. And it creates that single view of that particular company and customer or contact. And in that case, I can report against that accurately and, and trust that I have all the correct information, but it also tracks and links to all the various source systems where additional transactions may be hanging off of it. So I keep that almost as a parent record as well. And I don't lose any of my historical information well, at the same time, I accurately reflect that this is one person and not five or six different people with a series of smaller transactions. It's one person with an aggregated view of all of the information that is associated with that person. So in and of itself, that's what master data man management does. It's a series of functions and processes to do these four things, correct, enhance, connect, and unify the records. So real quickly, a few customer examples or real world examples and what that meant to those organizations doing this process. Um, and Sean, I, I don't know if you're, I saw you moving around a bit. If you have any questions, feel free to interrupt me. We'll um, do. Thanks, Tom. Okay. And I don't know if you caught it. I uh, I'm desperately tried not to look in the direction of my son who entered the room just a few minutes. <laughs> I did it hear was, that. I was... <laughs> Dragged away, kind of well like done. that guy on CNN. Um, all right, so um, Danaher is a multinational organization. They have a division that is uh, just around dental equipment. So Danaher is about a $26 billion organization internationally. The dental division does about $6 billion in business across dental practices worldwide. So what that means is that they sell things like um, dental implants, um, dental chairs, x-ray equipment, everything that would supply a, dental, a dentist or an oral surgeon's office. And they've grown through acquisition um, over the past you know, decade, buying up companies in that space that really circle all around everything that would be included in a dentist's office. So they don't just sell one product and it's, just, and it's not just one organization. It's a series of companies that they acquired. And each one of those companies had their own view of the dentist. In some cases, um, or in this example, they have Nobel BioCare, who's selling the dental implants. And then they have CaboCare, who is selling all of the equipment that goes into a process of installing, or in, 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 installing dental implants into a patient's mouth. Um, and they had a, about six or seven other businesses in the same space. Each one of these organizations has their own ERP system, has their own CRM system, and they all circle around the same customers globally. Well, their goal was to cross sell and upsell between all the different divisions within Danaher Dental. And they didn't want to go through and spend two or three years replacing everybody's ERP system with one global ERP. It was going to be a multi-year, multi-million dollar process. And in some cases, they were buying and selling some of these organizations, you know, inside of a year or two years to determine if they were a good fit. If somebody rolled in well, then they kept the organization. If they didn't, then they sold them off or spun them off or simply absorbed their customer base and dropped that product line. So going through the effort of rolling everybody into that new ERP system seemed like a very expensive effort um, without the return in some cases that it would have, you know, would have made it worthwhile. So what they wanted to do was also in this cross sell upsell off effort, look at where it would fit. So they used prophecy as a central hub to connect all of those customers and look at where the customers were the same, where they sold different products. And then they also used a business intelligence tool to see in what order did they buy the different products. Then they looked to see where did a customer exist that looked like these customers, but didn't exist in one of the other customers? 
And they took that and pushed that as a lead into their other systems. Um, and they did it vice versa with customers coming from the other systems and pushing them back into um, all the various other organizations systems. And they did this without having to build hard integration. They did this without having to rip and replace any systems, without having to retrain any of their current sales reps. And they now introduced new warm leads that ultimately resulted in a 10% increase in sales company-wide through targeted cross-sell and upsell. Um, now, I'd like to take full credit for this, but obviously it's some business intelligence um, and uh, there were other products as well as, you know, years and years of obviously history um, selling into these industries, but 10% increase in sales for a $6 billion organization. And this whole project took under a year and it took uh, a total budget combined of staff, software, implementation services in six figure range, low to mid six figure range. So they were able to achieve this level of result, obviously at this scale, without having to stop what anybody was doing. It's kind of like that old adage of, you know, changing the engine in the airplane while you're in flight. Well, they didn't have to change the engine. They just had to create a repository that made everything in their organization more valuable by connecting all of that data. And that's a key to where master data management fits and ties together not only their ERPs, but also their CRMs and other systems throughout the organizations. Creating a separate repository means I'm not adding a new system. I'm just connecting the data from all the other systems. I'm not ripping out your CRM. I'm making your CRM more accurate. In the case of many customers who have uh, uh, Salesforce, for example, or sorry, a Salesforce of, of folks who are using your CRM and they may be unhappy with the CRM system in place and they want a new CRM because that's going to fix everything. Well, if you take bad data and pump it into your new CRM, it doesn't make the CRM any more effective. It just carries your problem over and puts a new face on it. Hey, but, Tom, I've got a <clears throat> customer. I just want to share with, with our customers here that are on this call. Um, similar. Um, so originally, many years ago, we, we built the Salesforce connector. Uh, and, and the idea was pivotal customers, a lot of them have pockets of Salesforce users, and we wanted to have a 360 degree view of that customer uh, record, that information, whether you're in Pivotal or Salesforce. So we created the, the Salesforce connector, and we've sold a, a lot of it to our customers. Um, but several of these customers have gone beyond that. They've acquired companies that have different CRM solutions. They aren't quite there to rip it out and replace it with something, but um, I'm going to encourage them before they go down that path, if they go down the prophecy path, look at prophecy because now, uh, so one cu customer in particular, they've got two different Salesforce systems, a Microsoft CRM system, and they've got Pivotal. Um, Pivotal and one of the Salesforce systems talks, the other ones do not. Um, we've got a, you know, another connect, you know, we could sell them another connector to the Salesforce system, but you've got Microsoft CRM that we've not built a connector for. And it seems like instead of all these connectors, really prophecy is the way to go. Um, you've got four different CRM systems and this will be able to navigate through the right, right, right customer information. So you've got that gold record. Am I understanding that? Perfect. Absolutely. Perfect. Yep. Thank you very much for that example. Um, that that and and we'll go even a, a step beyond as, as we move up down the presentation. But that's exactly kind of the direction that we're talking about is is harnessing the power of the data. The systems are going to change. People are going to change. But the data is going to remain constant. And what you do with that data is what's going to make the difference between you know selling more products and treating customers, um, treating them well. I think that the, the promise of CRM, which I grew up on um, and started my career as a Siebel consultant, um, hard to believe some 20, <laughs> almost 30 years ago uh, when I was two. Um, and- uh, I was gonna say, you don't look a day over 30. <laughs> ex ex well, Thank you. I mean, I, I, I'd compliment you, but you're just being, you know, truthful. Uh, <laughs> um, but uh, in all honesty, the promise of CRM was that it was going to give you this perfect or this panacea, uh, the view of your customer. 
that would give you the ability to interact with them no matter what the condition. And in many cases, it, it went leaps and bounds beyond anything that was ever there before. And it still provides huge value to customers. But anybody that's lived with the CRM system knows that there's gaps, knows that there's problems. You can't defeat people putting in bad information. You can't change the fact that you've grown through acquisition or that there's multiple versions. And there's always going to be another system where you have some information that would be relevant to some conversations. And master data management was designed around not only that problem, but as, as I'll show you in a little bit, um, solving some of the other problems across other types of systems and other types of use cases beyond just the customer. Um, so one of those other customers that we dealt with, and I won't go into as much painful detail as I did with the last one, um, but hopefully this is interesting to you, to you guys. Domino's Pizza, who uh, many folks are familiar with, a global brand, sell pizza and they'll get the pizza to your house in 30 minutes or less. Well, Domino's grew that brand through the concept of not just being a pizza company, but being a logistics company. And all of their systems were designed around getting a pizza to your house in 30 minutes or that pizza is free. Um, what that meant was when I designed a system, I tracked where that address was and their incredible growth created incredible technical debt because they collected information about addresses. And in this case, John Smith called in from home, which was 123 Peachtree Road. He called in an order from his friend's house and that was at a different address. And then he had entered online orders from work, a third address. Domino's tracked three different customers in this case because they tracked addresses. They had no idea this was the same person. And as their data grew and the company grew, they created a database of over a billion transactions or addresses where orders came in. And they had no way of knowing who was at that same or at those different addresses, if it was the same person, if it was all different people. And that ultimately led to sending out coupons to all three of those addresses in this case, which was incredibly expensive. And they wanted to improve targeted marketing and to reduce costs of operations. And by the way, Domino's, um, and this is a funny story you'll hear uh, in some places in the data world, um, what data geeks think is hilarious, is that the number one buyer of IBM data, and Domino's is a good example of a similar problem, number one buyer of Domino's customer data was Domino's. IBM buys more IBM customer data from data aggregators than any other company in the world because of the disparity of, of their systems and the inability to kind of link them all together. They don't have single views of their customers. They have to go to third parties to get that information. Domino's was doing exactly the same thing. They were looking up information on John Smith from third parties and they've had a relationship with John Smith for years but they couldn't harness that power because their system limitations left them with only home address, work address, um, and these different locations without understanding who John Smith was. So with Prophecy, what they did is they underwent a process or a series of, of steps that helped them to do what we call householding. And I'm sure many of you are familiar with that expression. Householding allowed them to see who is John Smith who else is in John Smith's household and what are all the different addresses or locations associated with John Smith. So they were able to take all these transactional records and determine who was ordering from all these different locations. And the net result of that was a vast reduction in marketing spend, not only through sending out fewer coupons, but I no longer had to go out and buy data about John Smith because now I could look up John Smith's entire order history across all of his organization or all of his different addresses. Um, and on top of that, I could then say, hey, now that John Smith is ordering pizza from home, and there's my office assistant, um, <laughs> you know, uh, John's ordering a pizza at work. Well, John also orders pizza for home, and he's got to go home eventually, so I can add on to my order and upsell him, in this case, um, products that he can take home. Um, breadsticks or soda for the ride home or whatever the, the, the items were. So they saw not only an increase or decrease in market expend, they were able to stop buying data from data aggregators 
and they saw an increase in upsell and cross-sell with every order because they had a better single view of the customer and their order history and who else was in that customer's household. Um, and that's a similar use case. It's a target for MDM or excuse me, for CRM, as I'm sure many of you have undergone or experienced. Um, but in some cases, it's difficult to achieve if you don't have access to that data. CRM is great for the data that it has access to. Um, it's got some problems with data quality, as, as some of you have experienced. And then it's also got the limitation of only being able to touch the data that's connected. MDM is designed to kind of aggregate data across all types of systems, not just your customer data, not just your ERP, but order entry systems, fulfillment systems, asset management systems, any data that you have in the organization can be filled or, or pushed into an MDM solution because it's not a process-based application. It doesn't have the limitations where I have to redesign it every time I want to add new data or change my process flows. MDM is a giant data repository with specific capabilities around consolidating, cleaning, matching, and merging that data. So it's process independent, which makes it very powerful in a process driven or application driven environment. It doesn't have the same handcuffs that you have with your other systems. So next step is looking at kind of what types of other problems can you solve with master data and I'm going to try and relate this to experiences that I had as a CRM consultant and a CRM implementer over years and years of experience. Um, any good CRM system, when I went to implement it, um, there were a few catchphrases or things that I would always you know, be aware of, is that um, the best system in the world, if, if nobody wanted to use it, was a useless system. A system that didn't provide value um, to the end users was going to be a system they weren't going to put any effort or value into. So then it killed any reporting value that the CRM system had. The processes were too challenging to work with the system um, or the coming out of it was bad. Then people stopped having any faith in it and then they stopped using it and then it continued to get worse and worse. These are all problems that I had to address or you wanted to address up front when you designed a CRM system. And those problems can continue to grow and or exacerbate over the lifespan of, of a CRM system. Well, going in and replacing the system is only part of the, the story. Nobody changes the systems without deep cost justification. You don't just go in and say, hey, I'm going to fix this because the data is bad or I'm going to fix this because people don't like it. You really want to fix it based on a specific measurable objective. I want to be able to say that if I do this, I'm going to drive this much new revenue. If I do this, I'm going to reduce this cost of operation or retain this level of customers. Well, any business process or any project that you undergo internally should be driven by those types of metrics. And what we look at in the MDM world is business outcomes, not just data and data cleanup. I look at things like, am I going to drive better cross-sell and upsell? And what master data is taking into consideration is what products and or what systems are going to be engaged when I want to drive cross-sell and upsell. And in cross-sell upsell, I'm looking at CRM data, I'm looking at ERP data, because I'm looking at not only the customer information, but also orders and my uh, storage and my facilities, everywhere I'm going to process those orders. And that is going to involve multiple systems. If I'm looking at strategic procurement, I'm looking at my supply chain management system, my ERP system, my asset management system, inventory optimization, my facilities, assets, ERP, et cetera. And as you go down the chain or down the road, um, each process that you want to drive improvement in is going to touch multiple systems throughout your organization. So replacing any one system isn't always the answer and very rarely is the total answer. Getting the data from all of those systems is really where you're going to drive new and improved processes. So master data is geared around extracting those data and that those data from all of the various systems, including, you know, customized systems. In many cases, it could be patient drug medication um, or in uh, financial services, it could be your banking systems, your ATM systems, could be your um, 
third party or marketing automation systems. Anywhere you're looking at a business outcome, you're going to be touching multiple systems and multiple data sets, and you're going to be having to consolidate that data so you can create the best use case. So replacing a simple system isn't always the answer. In many cases, it's actually going to create a new problem that you hadn't thought about before, and you'll have potentially unintended consequences. Now, it doesn't mean don't replace systems. There are new features always coming out. Technology evolves. Some of the things that CRM can do today um, used to take a ton of effort or were even undoable in the old days with old CRM systems. So you can leverage those new capabilities, but leveraging them without going and addressing the data at the heart um, is just going to be putting new features in place without you know, the solid foundation of clean data. Hey, uh, Tom, I've got a, another uh, example of a customer that, <clears throat> that uh, has invested a significant amount in middleware. They have a middleware, uh, an integration team. Mm -hmm. And they've got four people that are focused on integrating all of their systems. They've spent, I would say, at least $2 million uh, in software and professional services and, and building out the integration. And what would you say to a customer that 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 says, "Well, we've we've got the integration team, um, you know," and and to me or to to that customer that to them that's more important is is really using middleware and pumping data in and out of systems so that everything's kind of in sync. It seems like a lot more expensive, takes a lot more time, um, and uh, I'm just wondering what your your thoughts are in comparing that to prophecy. So. Middleware has a, 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 a service bus, um, whether it's BizTalk or, or Tibco or um, yeah, Azure Data Factory or any of the uh, you know, extensive middlewares or if it's custom integrations, um, those create kind of the roads or the paths to connect the data from system to system, but it doesn't actually clean the data or match the data or optimize the data um, so it serves a different purpose than MDM. Um, it serves a very, you know, relevant and, and applicable purpose, but it, it's also typically at the transaction level. Um, so if I initiate a transaction within CRM and I've created a middleware process that connects my order with a, uh, um, an entry in CRM to an activity or an action, in CRM, um, that's great, but that doesn't deal with the problems that are created when somebody else goes into a CRM system and creates a new record that isn't touching the middleware that potentially creates now an issue that the middleware can't handle dealing with the duplicate or dealing with the, the errors that come up. Um, solving those problems transactionally becomes very expensive, very costly because you can't anticipate every potential issue that could come up and it can't, you know, identify the issues that are designed or that are that are handled by fuzzy matching and fuzzy logic or algorithm algorithms designed to look and see if Tom and Thomas are the same. Um, those are so there's 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 a place for middleware and we work with middleware vendors um, but it doesn't replace what we're doing here with MDM in the sense of cleaning up the data and creating the golden record that you can trust. It's more of a, a utility that takes advantage of master data management's output than competes with it. That's great. Thank, thanks. thanks for that response. I appreciate it. Hey, Tom, so I had a question come in if you want me to interrupt you as we go. Um, I guess Absolutely. it's got somebody thinking. So in kind of that same vein, how is, let's see, how is MDM different than the data warehouse that we might already have in place? So that's a great question. Um, and I, I hope I didn't cut you off. Nope, that, that was all. That was all I had. But it's, um, so the data warehouse, um, and there's new, new names for data warehouses um, as you kind of evolve. It used to be a data warehouse or data marts for specific subsets of data. And then you got to the data lake and then to the data estate. Um, well, I've had some customers who refer to their data lakes um, as data swamps because it became a dumping ground for data. Pushing everything into one place doesn't necessarily clean up the data. It doesn't resolve any of the data problems that 
existed before I put those records in one place. Um, a data warehouse becomes a giant repository for both structured and unstructured data where people are putting everything and it's not the panacea, same as you know, putting in a new ERP system or a new CRM system. It doesn't solve the problems of bad data, typos, um, miss keys, um, duplicate records. It simply puts them all in one place. So in most cases, what we'll do is, um, I'd say a majority of our customers that we've worked with have started with the data warehouse. They take a report out of that data warehouse and they've just you know, finished a one year project of creating that, that big data warehouse. First report they pull has inaccuracies all over it and they bang their heads against the table and say, what did I just build over a year's period and why is it still giving me problems? And then they'll come in and they'll actually use master data to clean up the data within the data warehouse or to structure it. And then that data warehouse becomes much more useful. We're a facility that kind of touches all aspects of your enterprise where data is stored or data is utilized. Whether it's your applications or your data repositories like your data warehouse um, or anywhere where you're gonna use that data. Um, advanced analytics, business intelligence, we're kind of like the, the, the traffic cop that enforces all the rules and cleans all the data and keeps it structured and sitting in the proper places and standing in the right lines so that all of your other systems can be more useful and do what they're designed to do, which is pull reports quickly or transact with the customer very quickly or um, give somebody the best customer service possible. So we work hand in hand with data warehouses um, we'd recommend, you know, going through the process of cleaning the data first because it's a much shorter period and process and it'll make your data warehouse much more effective once you implement it. But if you've already gone on the path of creating the data warehouse, I would submit that uh, that master data management serves as a utility to make sure that all of the data within that data warehouse is actually accurate and trusted and it allows you to trust the data that's sitting in that data warehouse and not just create another repository for the bad data that came out of your other systems. Sorry if that was too long-winded, but... Um, no, I actually, while you're talking, they, they did, they asked, um, so this isn't a replacement for data warehouse. So oh, I, absolutely you did address not. that, yeah. Okay, yep. thank you. So there All is right. a, data, a data repository in master data management, um, most modern master data management systems, but it's only storing the master records and the source records that create that master record, and then it's feeding it back to your data warehouse. Um, so we're a, a cleansing utility or a filter, if you will. Um, we store records, but only so that we can keep the records clean that are being fed into your data warehouse. So we're not trying to replace it in any way, and we're just trying to make it better. And any data that we stored is to serve the purpose of making the data in the various locations better. Okay, and John says, thank you, appreciate All it. Right. Thanks for letting us interrupt. No worries. Um, so observation, um, any real world business outcome will touch multiple domains or multiple systems. So 80% of our, our customers are what we call multi-domain, meaning they have data from all across their organization and all across their systems, not just you know, Pivotal or Salesforce, but also SAP or um, AX or D365 or any of their homegrown systems. Your businesses don't operate in a vacuum and none of your systems operate in a vacuum. Um, to properly service your customer or run a modern business, you have all kinds of different touch points, all kinds of different channels for communicating, um, all kinds of different pieces of information that impact how you do business and being able to tie all that together is where master data management kind of acts as a synergistic effect or ties all these systems together by cleaning up the data and making the data really work together. Um, so digital transformation is a, a catchphrase that a lot of people have heard. Um, modernization of the data state is another um, expression of the same message and I think a lot of people have heard this concept or this, this, this statement, data is the new oil. Um, it's attributed to Clive Humby uh, about 
actually 17 years ago now, I think it was 2003. Um, and the concept is that data is new, is the new oil, the new gold. And people have for years and years looked at their applications, like their ERPs as these workhorses. These were gonna be the things that solve their problems. And if I wanted to improve my process by 2% and get customer orders out that much faster at volume, that one or 2% was a huge return on my investment. But as these systems became more and more complex and more and more expensive, and the returns or the process improvements became smaller and smaller, those investments became harder and harder to make. But my SAP system or my ERP system in this case is like your, your, your giant monster dump truck. It serves a very specific purpose. It does that job better than anything else out there. It's purpose built and it's gigantic in nature and in effort to make it work this way because it's got 20, 30 years of technology and processes built into it. Um, and then I've got my CRM that allows me to interact with my customers. It's fast, it's flashy, it's very adaptable. It gets me you know, the answers that I need quickly when I wanna talk to my customers. These two systems cannot operate on the same fuel. And if I try to put in unrefined oil or unrefined data into these systems and feed them the same thing, I ultimately end up with a crash of those systems. No matter how cool it is, if you don't feed it the right fuel, it's going to blow up on you. It's not gonna work properly. So I apologize for this, this graphic. It was meant to imply that the, the cool car crashed and it's not really a gory picture. It's also kind of, uh, it shows that this guy has been texting and he, even after crashing his, his supercar, he's still texting. So I just wanted to add some levity and, and point out that this wasn't some sort of terrible depiction of somebody that was really badly hurt. Um, the real crime here is that he destroyed this great system or this great car. And that's what putting bad data into a brand new serum system is gonna do to it. It's gonna make it just as bad or painful to work with as the system that you may be replacing. And your projects in the future, like machine learning or artificial intelligence, and that may not be the future. In many cases, you guys are already looking at this. And if you're, if you're underway with any ML projects, you know how expensive your, um, your data scientists are or the processes for pulling this data together are. Um, you know that this is, this is not a little effort. It's not you know, something that's undertaken lightly, but putting this together or a project like this together requires completely different data or more highly refined data, different fuel, if you will. So having the utility that can refine all of that data that you've been tracking and pulling in over years and years is where MDM sits. So changing gears a little bit about, you know, what's the, what's the reason why um, so I'm going to be talking about both some, some technical aspects of this, but also kind of why we think Prophecy and Tokara are well positioned to help you deal with some of these data issues. And the first thing you have to address is, you know, how am I going to track or govern my data? And there's processes of data governance. There's solutions out there that can help you write rules around data governance. But MDM is going to be the actual um, point of the spear or the tip of the spear. It's where the rubber meets the road with what I wanna do and enforcing how I actually do it. And part of that is determining, hey, do I wanna centralized deployment for my master data? Do I wanna track all customers or put them all through one point of entry so that I know that the information is being tested and verified and making sure that it's accurate in one place? Um, and I may be the case for some parts of my processes, but not all of them. So being able to determine, do I want to take this approach or a different approach and what type of data um, is, takes expertise and a familiarity with your data, which Tokara has gained over years and years of working with you and your customer information and your CRM systems, and then applying technology that can handle that. Um, it's a very strict kind of methodology, um, but on the other end of the spectrum is kind of a registry deployment, 
where all the system data remains in the various source systems and I'm just pointing to it. I'm not enforcing any rules. I'm just tracking where everything really is stored. And that's a lot less rigid, it's very loose. And this is kind of a spectrum of different types of implementation styles. And in the middle are sub steps or what we call a, a consolidated model where data goes in from your various source systems in one direction to master data and it's used for cleaning and cleansing and pushing it into your data warehouse. But it's not pushing data back out like in a coexistence model where the system, some pieces of data are gonna, are gonna be in your CRM, some in your ERP, some in your supply chain management. And I'm gonna be going back and forth bi-directionally pushing updates out to all the various systems. The centralized model in essence puts everything through master data first and then pushes it out to the various source systems. And you may have combinations of these types of deployments. You may have evolutions of deployments. That's where somebody who's familiar with your organization, with your business processes, with your systems and having grown with you over the years and, and live with some of the problems and improvements that you've had to make with your systems is going to be able to take that knowledge as well as their business expertise and marry that with the technology like Prophecy to make that all happen for you in the most effective way. And our technology allows itself to modify and, and model and meld to your needs at the time. You don't have to build in concrete, um, very much like you know the old Pivotal where it was very flexible or pliable, um, but without the same technical debt because we're not building processes that are having to be undone or unbuilt. With MDM, we're focused on the data so I can change how I'm storing the data to marry it up to what your needs are at the time without losing anything or without having to rip it out and replace it in any way. So what that means is um, in the case of a centralized deployment, we have one customer, Ernst & Young, who's a global consulting firm that does both tax audit and um, technology consulting. They're a global customer and then a few years ago, um, there was a rule put in place where they couldn't do project work for any of their audit clients and they couldn't do audit work for any of their project clients. Um, so they've got over 4,000 users worldwide who every time they get a new customer, they enter that customer into their system and they think it's going directly into their ERP system, but it's actually going into Prophecy first, validating whether that customer exists, running through fuzzy logic to determine if it's a potential match or duplicate, comparing the names, the iterations, the versions of it, um, and all the pet, you know, potential logic that goes into creating a match. And then if it's a new customer, it pushes them directly into their ERP system. In their case, they've got multiple SAP systems um, and they go about their business and they are still using a screen that looks like SAP and it goes directly seamlessly into their system. We do the same thing with Salesforce, with other CRM systems. And now through our partnership with Tokara, we can do the same thing with Pivotal. Um, it allows you to not interrupt what somebody's already been doing, but now it, it takes it and runs it through this filter behind the scenes without the user ever kind of realizing it and then pushes them down their path to the right system or offers them the options if they're a potential duplicate and says, hey, this customer exists and they're already in this line of business. You can't do new tax business with them. And they now save a whole bunch of time and pain of you know an expensive investment of servicing this customer only to find out that they can't actually do business with them. Um, there's other examples of all the different types of deployments, coexistence where I may have the same rule around doing business with the customer, but at which location? Well, that might be a looser you know, uh, rule or it might be that the location is stored in my facility management system, but the customer data is stored in my CRM system. The products that they own or are buying is stored in my ERP system. And each one of those systems is owning those pieces of the data, but the whole overall record is being tied together with, with your master data management system and making sure that it's not a duplicate customer ordering from the wrong facility 
we're ordering a product that may be now a different name because we've changed the name of the product or something as simple as my old supplier called these red hammer 12 ounce and my new supplier calls them 12 ounce red hammers. Those are all potential duplicates that could be cleaned up by master data and prevent you from having issues that are ultimately gonna result in bad shipping, delayed experience for the customer, um, return orders or customer dissatisfaction because the order that came to him was wrong or incomplete or he got the wrong pricing um, because he has a pricing contract that's in place, but you didn't know that because the order entry system didn't track that it was the right name associated with that right record with that pricing model. Those are the types of problems that can be fixed by these different types of deployments. And that's where business expertise in association with Torcora has helped us to kind of marry process and the capability and the technology to tie your data and your business processes together. Sean, anything to add or? I saw you move there a little bit, but. Uh, I'm no, to... um, there, there was one thing actually, thanks for asking. Okay. Um, uh, we, we are in process of building uh, a connector between Prophecy and Saratoga uh, as well. I know we've been really focused on Pivotal and most of the customers attending this uh, are Pivotal customers, uh, but Saratoga customers uh, have this, in fact, a number of them have this challenge. They master data management is, is really music to their ears. In some cases, uh, you know, they've got uh, integration to 10, 15 of the systems. They've got 3,000 users. They've got, you know, just the, the complexity of their data with these uh, uh, Saratoga customers. I think the prophecy is going to be a really good fit for that. So that's all. I was just thinking of that and uh, wanted to mention that on this recorded uh, uh, presentation because I know there's going to be some Saratoga customers listening to this afterwards. So my apologies for the interruption. No, no, great. Oh. Um, thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. Um, Saratoga, I remember it well. Um, great customer base. Um, very, very neat solution. Very loyal customer base. Yeah. Um, and it, it, it's just, it's an example of a great product where I'd like to tie information together with all of the rest of my enterprise um, and and be able to do it confident pulling the wrong records. You know, I just I'll just mention, uh, and that this is really for Pivotal customers and Saratoga customers. In most cases, they don't want to leave their CRM. You know, they've got ten years of investment customization put into their system, and in a lot of cases, they love Pivotal and or Saratoga. So they just don't want to move away from it. But they do have these issues that I think Prophecy can solve a number of these problems for them. Uh, where they don't really need to consider spending millions of dollars migrating to a Salesforce or something like that. So um, this, I think this is music to a lot of customers' ears. So, Absolutely. Yep. No, the first step is making sure you fully understand the problem. If the problem is the data, um, no system replacement is going to fix it. Um, and fixing the data issue may change the scope and the effort that you're going to put into you know, the next step in that process. And it may be that you can extend the lifespan of a solution um, and keep it in place as, you know, much, much longer. I've had customers who, you know, who decided after cleaning up the data that they didn't have to replace their CRM system. And they were able to save that effort and the cost of the new licenses. Um, it wasn't the, the, the system that was bothering their users. It was the inaccuracy of the data coming out of the system. Um, and business users in some cases don't understand the difference um, because they just know they go to use a system, they get bad results. So a new system should fix it. That's right. That's exactly hey. right. There's a number of people on this call right now. I know they have that, that issue. Their users aren't particularly happy with the CRM. They go in there, they, they, the data is bad or the functionality is not quite right for them. And so uh, they'd like to toss it and implement something different, but um, you know, potentially it could have the same, same exact issue that they've got today, uh, unless these other things are fixed. And, and like you said, you can save a lot of money by not implementing new CRM uh, and just solving these data issues uh, would probably make your end users a lot happier. And, and I popped up because somebody had an exception with what you just said, Sean. In fact, they 
are moving to a new CRM platform. They said it's going to take probably 18, 24 months based on just reading here, 18, 24 months. So they want to know, should they think about MDM before or after they make the move to the new CRM system? Um, Tom, I, I think I know an answer to that, but. Well, uh, I, you know, without, I'm obviously biased, but I'll justify my bias in my answer, which is um, consolidation deployment or what we call an analytical deployment, because it's typically, you know, the first step of any, any MDM process, um, we refer to it as clean the data, move it clean, keep it clean as the various kind of lifespan of an MDM deployment, where clean the data is the consolidation of data and creation of golden records. Um, where I'm, and then moving it clean is moving it into a new system or a new place or location, like a data warehouse or a new CRM or ERP system. And then keep it clean is kind of the operational model where I start to go down the coexistence and centralized path. It's kind of the evolution as I go down this lifespan. Well cleaning the data first and foremost <coughs> with prophecy is typically a 10 to 12 week effort. Um, being able to understand what my golden records look like in 10 to 12 weeks is an incredibly you know, effective way to determine how big is my problem. And if I can do that first, before I go down the year or year and a half path, of putting in a new CRM system or ERP system, I'm going to save myself a lot of heartache from turning it on and seeing bad data. Um, you may still want to go down the path of doing a new CRM system, but if day one, when I turn on that new CRM system and I have good clean data in it, and it only took me a matter of weeks to get there before I actually went down the path, or even as I'm designing it, I can be doing them in parallel. The adoption is going to be way better if your user's first experience is one with accurate data in there, as opposed to one with bad data that I have to go in and clean up after the fact. I always recommend doing that first um, because it also may uncover um, changes to the way you're actually processing your data within your different systems that you're going to be deploying. And it's a much shorter and smaller investment, much, much faster time to value. And you can be using that data for business intelligence and a series of other activities without having to wait until after you actually complete the longer implementation of the other process or project. I, and I just wanted to add, based on all the experience we've had with moving customers from Pivotal to another CRM solution, that data migration, that's always the bear that gets you at the end here. If you don't take it seriously, you think you're just going to take care of that after you do all the, uh, the migration of the application itself, you leave the data to migration to the end. That spoiled more good migration projects for customers making that move than anything we've seen before. So that's something we always discuss at the very beginning. We don't wait till yeah, that's the that, project's and, going, Sean. And I'll just yeah. add to that that in the past, that's been something that just even from my my implementation experience, pivotal, you know, twenty years ago, that's always been the issue. Is uh, if there's one thing that's underscoped um, and not understanding the magnitude of the data quality, it's, it's the data cleansing effort and then migrating it into your new CRM system. Uh, it, it's always way more than you ever expected. And so we've taken steps to, to fix that. Like Mark just said, we address that right up front. We let them know, and there are some things that we do to, to look at the data and the quality of the data and what kind of condition it is. And we've got uh, experience in estimating based on what we're seeing, what it's going to take to migrate that, clean that and migrate that over to, uh, to the new CRM system. But with the prophecy solution in the mix here, um, the quality of the data, um, it just, it kind of, honestly, it changes everything. Uh, it becomes easier, faster. It stays in place longer. Cause that's, that's the other thing is once you get all that data cleaned up from your current, CRM system, migrate that over to your new CRM system, um, you know, within a year, it's going to be dirty again, unless you've got controls in place. Um, and that's, that's where really prophecy does a great job of, of solving that problem. So. Well said. And I, uh, 
I couldn't have said it any better. Um, so I appreciate that input. Um, we really, yeah, I, I, I hope I don't, uh, I don't sound like I'm undervaluing any of the core application. Um, I love CRM um, and Pivotal. I still love as an application, um, still one of the best CRMs that I've ever used and still can compete today. Um, and they're still selling some of those old CRM systems. Even Siebel is still being sold by Oracle um, for a new name and a new branding, but it's still the same technology under the covers. When you have something good like Oracle or like Pivotal, um, you know, ripping it out isn't always the answer. And it still serves a very specific purpose that MDM can't handle, which is transacting and, and interacting with the customers effectively um, and flexibly. But um, you know, it, it's not designed to do matching and merging and data enrichment the way MDM is. So everything serves a purpose, um, and we feel like it. The the MDM market is is extremely undervalued and under and misunderstood in many cases because it's not as flashy and as upfront. But working together with all of your other applications makes them much more effective as well. Um, I know that I. Uh, I want to make sure that I don't run out of time here. Um, uh, Mark, how much more time do I have? For? Well, you've, you've got 20 minutes till okay. the bottom of the hour. So we're good. Great. Okay. So digital transformation, um, we effectively have kind of have stated throughout this process requires master data management. So if you look at it at a, in a nutshell, what am I trying to do with the digital transformation? This is kind of a summation of, of the various pieces or steps that I've covered here. Um, what I want to do in a digital transformation is take all of my application information, um, and I'll try and use my mouse here, um, from my D365 or ERP um, or AX or SAP and my CRM data and my Pivotal, my Salesforce, my Saratoga data, and all my other application data and I want to run it through some sort of process um, and maybe even some data governance processing of understanding, you know, what the different data elements are because my CRM system um, has first name, last name, and my ERP calls it F name and L name, and my other systems call it name first, name last, um, or I only have one field for name and it's first and last in one space. And a data catalog may track all of that and kind of label what all the different fields are from the different systems. Um, and you may define rules for, you know, what's personal information, what's um, compliance information, what's GDPR or CCPA relevant if anybody's dealing with um, California Consumer Protection Act or, um, or any of those uh, privacy um, issues or CASA law or um, spam can, uh, can spam act um, around marketing of customers. I want to track maybe the different types of data that I'm looking at. And then I want to process it, move it, whether it's via an ETL tool like Dell Boomi or Talent or Informatica into a data warehouse or data lake. Um, and then I want to report on it with Power BI or Tableau or some other BI tool. And I ultimately want to get to the place where I can use my advanced analytics and model on it. And I may also want to do it all in the cloud because I don't want to manage the infrastructure anymore, or I want to move towards SaaS vendors, or if I'm even more modern, I want to move towards PaaS or platform as a service vendors. And I may be bought in with AWS or Google Cloud or Azure services to put all my applications in one place. Well, all of this requires data management. Data management sits in the rule in the middle. It enforces data quality and governance standards. It identifies and resolves data issues. It matches, merges, and enriches the data that's coming out of these systems. And then is pushing the data back into those systems in the corrected, clean um, state. It acts almost like a water filter in the middle of your refrigerator where the refrigerator is doing all the cooling and the heavy lifting. It's got all the storage, but if I'm not pumping in, you know, and cleaning the water that's going through it, I'm getting 
bad tasting ice. I'm getting bad tasting, um, you know, food back out of the fridge. Prophecy is making sure that everything that comes in is cleaned and structured and processed and pushed in the right order and back to the right system. And I may be using my middleware in the case, you know, where Sean mentioned that somebody already has a middleware system in place. That's a facility for transferring it. We're going to sit in the middle and do only what, you know, you need done in terms of cleaning, processing, and managing it. And I don't have to do it all at once. I may start in one area of your in your organization and then move on from customer data to product data to asset data, et cetera. Um, and Prophecy allows, you know, for that without having a specific license around each area of data, because I may also be solving it based on a particular business process. I may want to get to this kind of nirvana state where all things are going through this process, but I'm going to fund it first by an improvement in cross-sell upsell. So to get to cross-sell upsell, I have to clean CRM data and some order data out of my ERP. And I'm going to follow this same sort of methodology um, and look with my BI tools to see what's the best cross-sell upsell opportunity against these customers who have these types of orders. And then that's going to help me solve that process as well as fund the next process by being successful in increasing my cross-sell and upsell or doing customer retention or doing something else that I can only achieve through looking at my data through analytics and determining what do I need to improve. But in order to, to look at it, I have to have accurate data to begin with. Um, that whole concept of garbage in, garbage out only gets bigger when you have more information more garbage creates bigger garbage output. More data that's accurate and clean gives you more opportunity for improvements throughout your organization. And that's what a digital transformation is built on. The concept that I'm going to look at all of my data and analyze it in ways that I never could before through new technology and new reporting capabilities. Um, but it's built on the kind of foundation that I'm starting with clean data to begin with. The best data scientists in the world um, at, you know, IBM using Watson, taking all this great, you know, all this data and all these great scientists and feeding it into supercomputers is going to return garbage output if I started with bad data to begin with. And we've seen that with healthcare, where um, there's been some recent publication of some failings of some of the big um, companies like Google and IBM, where they fed bad data into their supercomputers and came up with bad results. It resulted in an inaccurate information coming out of it. Um, so before I invest in those gigantic projects, a cost-effective process like master data management in the hands of professionals who have earned your trust by understanding your other systems and your customer processes like Takara can be a very cost-effective beginning to a digital transformation that'll allow you to extract new value out of your operations that wasn't possible without these tools. And it's going to basically be the, the platform or springboard into new business transformations by cleaning the data and really being allowing you to wring the value and, and true potential out of your data by making sure it's clean and accurate so that you can take advantage of all the new technology and new capabilities, as well as extend the lifespan of your current systems or make them more powerful and create a better experience for your users, reduce training by keeping the processes in place that they're comfortable with, just cleaning the data behind the scenes, adding an extra kind of check and balance, um, all behind the scenes without having to rip and replace things, without interrupting your daily life, um, empowering you to do more with, with the same utilities that you have in place and to compete in the new digital world. And that's really the promise and value of master data management. Um, I hope I didn't get teary-eyed or too excited when I, when I went through that little monologue, but we really do see huge value in it. And the reason why we can deploy this so quickly and extract what we think is huge value in a very little time is because unlike some of the other technologies that used to do this, um, that grew through a whole bunch of different utilities that did each of those four foundational steps, 
the match merge the, or the correction of the data, the enhancement, the connecting of the data and the unification of the data. We've built it all from the ground up in a single code base that can be installed in as little as 15 minutes in the cloud or can be run on-prem if you don't wanna lose control of your data. You have full control over the system and at its heart, it's putting everything into a SQL Server database. So you have full control over it. You never lose control of your own data. Um, and you have unlimited access to it through standard SQL views. You're not going to some sort of, you know, uh, black box technology that's hiding what it's doing from you. And you're able to tune it with no code, low code, easy to use workbench, very similar to being able to extract value out of Pivotal. The big value I thought in Pivotal when I used to implement it, when I used to work with it was that you could teach somebody with business acumen how to use the Pivotal toolkit much faster than you could teach um, somebody in the technology department who was a good coder, all the business processes that they needed to address. Because I married both easy to use WYSIWYG sort of kind of look and feel drag and drop capabilities to business problems. Um, that's what the same metaphor that we've used with prophecy and why implementations are so fast and so cost effective. Consistent user experience, shorter learning curve, faster configuration. And we have customers like MD Anderson Cancer Center who started in one area and now has deployed this across their entire enterprise. They have now the largest database of cancer genetic markers in the world. And when COVID hit, they had to get to a place where they could analyze um, COVID treatments against cancer patients, and they had to do it in a hurry. And what they did was took all of the data that they had from their, their cancer marker database, structured it through prophecy, fed it into a database, and then married it with symptoms from COVID, again, structured through prophecies so that they could build this taxonomy. And in a matter of weeks, they built a data set that they could then feed into an ML process or an AI artificial intelligence model that allowed them to start looking for treatment options and outcomes um, and looking with all of this powerful kind of new technology it could take all of that and create now treatment paths for cancer patients, patients that were dealing with COVID. They did that process with their own team internally in a matter of weeks with the Prophecy platform, something we're very proud of, um, that they didn't need to go outside, they didn't need to spend um, months or years coding. They were able to do all of the data that they had, take a tool that they were familiar with because of managing other aspects of their data and create outcomes that were impacting real world lives and saving lives, um, all with the tool that they already owned. Um, Great story. So uh, we say other vendors, you have to, uh, some assembly is required, you have to marry all those pieces together. And Prophecy actually comes fully assembled, which is very relevant with Christmas coming up. <laughs> uh, the only thing you add is your data. Um, and then I will close out on, on this. Um, this is a, a quote from Gartner. By 2021, 75% of large enterprises, the office of the CDO or chief data officer is gonna be seen as mission critical, um, comparable to IT, business operations, HR and finance. The world understands how it, data is driving changes and master data management allows you to harness that. And practitioners like Tokara with experience in not only MDM, but also your business and your data warehouse and your reporting are the perfect partners for actually achieving value and achieving it quickly. Um, and I can talk to you about our placement on the Magic Quadrant, um, but uh, really what's exciting is the fact that again, Prophecy at its core, and this is my product pitch and I apologize, I don't like a product jockey, but um, all of these things in one place, stewardship and governance, data quality, relationship management, golden record management, integration workflow, hierarchies are all part of the Prophecy core application and can be harnessed in one place. And you don't have to deploy it all at once. You don't have to follow a big bang, but as you get value out of these different areas, um, both today and in the future, 
you can use the same tool without having to relearn a new solution every time. And you can get rid of all those desktop Excel databases and put them and attach them to your customer records. Without having to worry that the person who owns that database or that Excel spreadsheet may not show up for work one day and I'm gonna have all that intelligence lost. Master data becomes that home for any of that homeless data that you have in your organization. Um, and then the same concept of deploy it, achieve value quickly, and then go to the next process and the next process. It's not a big bang approach. It's something where you're gonna kind of continue down this journey of where do I see value, deliver the value, use the proof to address your next project and your next project. And the solution itself is even priced based on the volume of data that you add to it. You don't have to buy some monolithic system to do this. You can buy it with a limited amount of data in it. You get all the capabilities. And then as you decide to add and extend it, you can add additional records to the database size and then you can continue to grow it in, until you have maximized the value out of the system. So that's it um, as far as uh, presentation I have for today. Very good. Well, thank you, Tom. Um, yeah, you did a great job because I know MDM can be kind of tricky to understand. And uh, what I appreciated about your presentation is uh, you kind of simplified it and put it in context that I think um, at least me personally uh, can understand and hopefully the the audience can too. Uh, we had a great, we got a great crowd and I say we got one because nobody's dropped off yet. I have a couple questions uh, that came through um, after the last call. Uh, so one, and this makes sense coming from our, our audience of, of mostly Pivotal customers, but can Prophecy be used standalone uh, to to clean and dedupe the data in Pivotal. Uh, so what I, I know you showed how you can uh, prevent adding duplicate data, but can it be used after the fact and, and cleaning up data? Absolutely. That same kind of metaphor of uh, clean the data, keep it clean or move it clean, keep it clean. You can attach it. Um, you can take a feed or kind of a, a data dump in a batch from Prophecy and then you can run through a process of matching and merging. And what we do is the steps, um, so the short answer is yes, the more involved answer is we match the records and then there's a process of determining are these matches automatically grouped together or does somebody wanna verify that these are the same records? Because you may have records that are questionable. And we have a process called data stewardship built into the system. So you can have human intervention. And then the next step after you match the records is survivorship, which attributes from the matched records should go to the golden record, which piece should you promote to be your, your, your golden record, the record that you point to everybody. Cause it may be that one version of the record has the right name and the other version of the record has the right phone number. And I wanna keep the best elements of all the various records that have gone in. You don't throw them away. You don't pick and choose which one you keep. You pick the elements from all the various records and you keep the best representation of that record. And then you feed that back as the, as the correct, clean golden record into the source system. So you can definitely use it just with your CRM system both to clean it at the beginning and then also to keep it clean moving ahead where I prevent new problems from coming in by running through that process up front. Great answer. Seeing if there's any response to that. Nope, sounds, um, here's the last one I've gotten, well, at least as of now, um, I'll just read it as it's come across. Is MDM typically owned by the business or IT side of the organization? And I think I'd, I'd like to kind of extrapolate on that question since you've been involved in helping uh, businesses uh, acquire and adopt MDM, but who, who typically initiates that, that cycle to say, we need MDM? Is that coming from the business, coming from the IT? Who owns so, it after the fact? So I would say that, you know, the, the maintenance and the ownership is, is going to, it's an application that you own and you control. It's not a SaaS solution. Um, it's, it can be managed by a vendor um, if you want it to be, but it's your 
data. And typically don't, people don't wanna lose control of their data, even if they put it in the cloud. Um, so it's gonna be owned ultimately by IT typically, but your ownership footprint is very limited. Uh, Intel is one of our customers who's owned the solution for seven years now. And their entire footprint of their team is a part-time administrator and a, a group of part-time customizers who will use the system when they have to make changes to it. Um, and it manages billions of records behind the scenes. Everything that comes in through their point of sale systems, everything that's non-SAP data at Intel goes through Prophecy at Intel. And it's got a very small administrative footprint. Um, it's really a team of about three people overall. But the business users interact with it every day. And the stewardship screens are rolled out to the, to the business users because you want the people closest to the data validating and making the changes to the data because they're the ones interacting with the customers. Um, so you push it out to the business to own the processes of cleaning the data um, but IT manages the system behind the scenes with a limited effort. Thank you, Tom. Very Appreciate good. Appreciate that. We are coming down to the bottom of the hour. And um, if there's any more questions that pop up after the fact, um, please uh, feel free to get a hold of me, Sean, or if you're working uh, more closely with John Hopkins or Steve Lukowitz, feel free to contact them. And of course, we will, we have recorded this. We'll make this available to, um, all the participants, um, if you feel like you want to review it, feel free or pass it along to somebody else within your organization and, and share this information. You're welcome to do that as well. And so, Tom, well, thanks. And we'll be sending out a link uh, for the recording. It will also be on our YouTube channel. It will also be available or linked through our website. So very easy to get to. And uh, I want to give a special thanks to Tom Era. Uh, for spending you know, time with our customers and speaking to them about uh, MDM and, and really making the case uh, of, of the value of MDM. And I think there's going to be uh, a lot of our customers very interested in this. So thank you very much, Tom. Appreciate it. And it's thank great, you, Tom. great to see you as well. Great to yep. see you. Thank, thank you. Thanks, everybody. All right. Appreciate Thanks, everybody, for joining. And uh, I want to wish everybody happy holidays. And uh, we'll be resuming these in January. I don't have the date yet or the topic, but uh, we'll, we'll be announcing that in a couple of weeks. So enjoy the holidays. And thanks again for joining. You have a great day. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.